Welcome to Beers with Rich. I'm Rich, editor of Under the Radar Report. Well, this week's going to be a quick one, I can tell you that, because I felt like a lager. I don't know why, I just felt like one maybe trying to hang on to summer. One of the analysts said <clears throat> one of the best lagers is produced down the road. So here it is, White Bay's Lager, straight from Mansfield Street, Roselle, Sydney, Australia. Welcome home. Oh, crack it. Ah, refreshing. It's not bad. Bye. Speaking of local, this week's budget was all about putting another log on the inflation fire. Luckily, this week we included among our best buys more inflation busters because that's what you're going to need. I mean, look at pe petrol prices. Just look at petrol prices. I mean, we all know the hit when we go to the when we go to the gas station and you would think that a reduction um, in the cost of petrol by 22 cents a litre would lead to a reduction in the cost of living and hence not be inflationary. Well, I beg to differ. I mean, basically knowing that it's temporary, people are just going to spend more on petrol than ever. They're going to pour petrol onto the inflation fire. That's only the first round effects. The second round, the Keynesian multiplier effects, the stimulatory effects, are going to mean that people are going to spend that money that they might have spent on petrol and other things. Now, look, don't get me wrong. You know, I love economic activity as much as the next bloke. He's to economic activity. But yes, I love that, but not stuff that's going to supercharge inflation. Look, inflation isn't bad. It's actually good. But inflation that's climbing at the rate of knots is what's bad. Because that means that the government's going to have to clamp down on it harder to, to make sure that people's standard of living doesn't deteriorate. And that's right, like high inflation with subdued wages growth, you don't want to think about if you're a politician, you do anything to avoid that. So that's why, you know, there's a lot of danger ahead. That's why we're positioning our portfolios to combat that kind of activity. Let's go through what you've got to do again. One. Get rid of stocks you don't understand. Two, buy some disruptors. Three, get some hedging in play. Maybe some gold stocks. Four, buy some blue chips with pricing power and consistent dividends. Look, I mean, this week's, you know, this week's under the radar report included a refresh of our best buys. And that included some disruptive lithium producers. So we can help you get you started on these uh, four big initiatives. And these ones are moving fast. Another, another Best Buy that's interesting actually is one of those stocks that I love because they've they've proven their you know they've proven their metal with their business model being disruptive in a small market like Australia, and now they're going, you know, to the big US market where I think they're gonna which is gonna supercharge their growth. So that's a particularly exciting stock. And uh, next week we've got six more Best Buys, so it's all coming. But it's really the stocks that you might um, need help with that I want to talk about. Because let's face it, we've never seen an influx of, of more stocks, or we haven't for a long time at least seen an influx of more stocks on the ASX than recently. Like I call 2021 the IPO deluge. I mean, basically you had a combination of pent-up demand from 2020 from the first iteration of the pandemic, you had low interest rates, you had investor optimism, and this glut, this savings glut that I've talked about, all combining to produce, you know, unherald, unheralded capital raisings on the ASX. You know, some of them IPOs, but we're also talking about, you know, mass capital raisings across the spectrum. So people sitting on, um, you know, and spin-offs, all sorts of stuff. Stuff that just makes investment bankers salivate. But let's not be left with the hangover. Let's understand what's in our portfolios now so we can make uh, you know the right decisions. Where we, we're able to help it under the radar report is people like subscribers send us in their stocks and we give them a once-over, kind of like a quick car wash. So we have a look at them and give, it, give our preliminary thoughts. I mean, it's a great way of you know, being a part of the small cap network. And so what I want to do quickly is go through a few of those. First one was interesting, Calix, Calix CXL, market cap, 1.2 billion. A year ago, 
or a year and a bit ago, market cap 100 million. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, I mean, what we're seeing is a company that's captivated investors because they've got this technology that's supposed to literally clean up cement. So clean up the reduced carbon dioxide. So... I mean, if that can, if it can do that, God, I mean, the numbers, the numbers on the, the numbers just look absolutely amazing. But look, you're paying a lot for that, and I think what speaks volumes is that construction for the plant is slated to commence in 2023. I mean, that in Germany. I mean, that says it all. It's a long time between drinks. Speaking with, let's get back to some White Bay Classic, mm, classic lager. So what I'm saying is like, okay, be careful paying up. The idea is good, but you know, now that interest rates are going up, there's going to be a lot more competition for capital. And there's going to be even more competition when interest rates start hitting sort of 3 4%. So that your stock psychalics will have to really earn their stripes to be worth that kind of really big market cap. Another one, clean tech water, spin-off from a nickel, from a nickel um, technology company. Uh, Sunrise Energy, and this is very much the sort of smaller part of that spin-off. So revenues less than 10 million. This one's trying to clean up too. This time, using its um, graphene membrane technology to dissolve organics in wa wastewater. While it's got a lot of potential, it's so early stage. Like some of these stocks are really sort of ideas with a listing. So you know, it's too early. The next one I want to get to Yoji. Looks looks more interesting, I would say, in terms of value than the other two. Um, market cap one thirty million. This one's trying to be like the next Wise Tech Global. Market cap over eleven billion. So you know it's in a very lucrative area of software for logistics. So this one's early stage, definitely worth keeping an eye on. I know we will be. What's up for next week? I told you it was going to be a quick beer. Let's have another sip. More of everything. That's it. More best buys, more sub picks, more stock updates, more economic analysis in blue chip, and best of all, more beer. In short, more value. Here's to beers with Rich. See you next week.